Welcome to another episode of Band Director Bootcamp, the podcast with productivity and wellness tips for busy band directors. I'm your host, Leslie Moffat, and I'm really grateful to be sharing this platform with you. As busy band directors, we know you don't have a lot of time to watch lengthy professional development webinars, so we share 20-minute tidbits with takeaways you can use to support you in this awesome profession in a healthy way. And today, I'm bringing a guest in. His name is Alejandro Gonzalez, and he's been teaching 13 years in Texas, both at the high school and middle school level. And um, the reason I, I... found him some of his cool stuff on Facebook. And then I stalked him a little bit online and I'm like, he's got some really cool resources and I'm not a percussionist. And, and so I was really drawn to it because he specializes in percussion and he's got some practical and helpful tools for us today. So Anthony or Alejandro, sorry, Alejandro, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm thank so you awesome. for having me. Yeah. Um, can, it's my. It was my last day of school today, so I'm a little frazzled. So I'm sorry for the the wrong. Congratulations! <laughs> I survived. Yes, it was great. <laughs> but um, could you just tell us before we get into the details about, about all this? Just give us a little background. How, how come you became a band director? So I always loved teaching. I really started teaching kind of private lessons while I was a student in high school. Uh, my senior year, I got to teach in two other bands. Um, I ended up going to Texas State and loved my time there. Learned a lot. Um, I've been now teaching in Texas for 13 years. I went to my first high school, it was a really small band, and I was able to double the size of my drumline in four years. And then over the last two years there, I worked on their academics and actually had 33 of 39 students eligible to go to contest because of like academic standards that we put into the drumline. It was pretty awesome. Um, and I realized I liked teaching middle school. And so I took over, actually, I got to open a brand new middle school in Colleen ISD, right in the right in the middle of Texas. And um, it was such a neat experience opening a school and being able to create my own curriculum for the first time. And I ended up kind of writing a book, writing some resources, because it was very new to me, all the mixed um, instrumentation and having a brass class of 63 so um, I'm very fortunate to be at my new position at Walsh in Round Rock, Texas, and where I have the ability now to write books and spend more time in the percussion world and like really get to take my professionalism to the next level. Cool. Well, what we're going to do, and we're going to jump right in today. We're going to, Anthony's going to, oh, I don't know what's going <laughs> on with me today. <laughs> Alejandro is going to talk to us specifically about three resources he's created. And we're going to put a link in our show notes to his website so that you can check him out in more depth. But I've asked him today to talk about three of them, um, the titles of them, and then what what he's found when he's used them in his classes and when other folks use them so that you can go, Hey, that might work, help me in my situation. So the first one you have um, that we're going to talk about is called note naming for musicians. Tell us a little bit about why you would have created this resource and what have you seen as a result of having this? All right. So in this one, I created it for my mixed brass class. I had horn, trumpet, trombone, euphonium, tuba. And I didn't want to just go through a beginning band book and note name. And so I created um, like whole notes on a staff and we go through them very meticulously on this is how the scale, or this is how the staff works. And then I broke it into six levels. So level one is the first nine weeks and it's just the basic notes in their basic range. Level two starts introducing the concept of a key signature. Like what would a key signature do to a line of music? The third one starts putting the key signature um, in keys kind of outside the their... There, what we would consider our comfort level. And then level three starts introducing the accidental rule. And then level four takes the accidental rule and key signature into account together. And it's it's just a way to slowly introduce a lot of concepts and really be able to check for understanding all along. And the cool thing is you can do it with any class. Um, you can do it if you have percussion and horns. You can do it if you have flute and violin. You can do it if your choir class has to come in and you're teaching your full band ensemble. You can just say, all right, let's get up level six. Let's see how good we are at note naming and how good we are at reading key signature and applying accidental. So it's a really cool resource to just use for any mixed class and to, to really make games out of note reading. 
<laughs> yes. And so many of us can relate because we don't have the luxury of let's just practice with our trumpets today or blah, blah, blah. And I found mm-hmm. that was really hard, you know, as a be- having taught beginning band for the first time this year. So this resource fascinates me in a, a quicker and easier way. It's easier, it sounds like, for everybody than some of the ways we've had to do this. So that's a great one, the note naming for musicians. Talk to us a little bit about your uh, resource called Scale Sequences for Percussionists. So the scale sequences for percussionists were written for really band teachers and students. It it helps anybody understand the keyboard aspect of percussion, or if you're learning piano, or if you're a child learning scales. Um, I just shared it with somebody recently who they wanted to use it in their elementary class. And so um, what it does is it has students you do worksheets where they fill out the keyboard, they understand what a whole step, half step is, a tetrachord, they build scales. And then after they understand the structure of a scale and they've written it two or three times and they've said it and they've identified shapes, then we start to introduce them one at a time. So they'll play like just their tetrachords. Then we add the mini scale and arpeggio. And then we add the full scale going up. And then we add the full scale up and down with the full arpeggio. And then we add some other little things in here. So it's a great way for students to have a resource in sixth grade percussion that keeps them involved all the way through eighth grade percussion. Because it's it's in it's not possible to finish it all in sixth grade. It's really a three year project, and if a kid is able to do them, which I've had one kid be able to do the entire um, level seven scale in all twelve keys, and it was incredible to watch, and it inspired everybody around him. So I'm pretty sure this coming year I'm going to have about four or five eighth graders that are able to complete them all. That's all it takes is that one kid, and that kid's yes. going, I can do that too. I remember my middle daughter could not get herself to swallow pills when she was a kid. And then she, her best friend learned and she's like, well, if Barbara can do it, so can I <laughs> immediately. So yeah, it's incredibly motivating when their peers can do something. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And then I want you to talk a little bit about the one that you've also written called the 10 daily drills for percussionists. All right. 10 daily drills. This is like my baby. Um, as a middle school percussionist, I was always sitting in the back of the classroom doing nothing for warm-ups. The long tones, the articulation control, the note lengths, the tuning after all of that. The And then they would get to scales, but we wouldn't get to play them because we didn't have enough keyboards. Um, so we're just sitting in the back of the classroom doing absolutely nothing for 15 to 20 minutes, getting in trouble for talking. And I know I've walked into a thousand band halls that the same thing happens. It's, it's inevitable. Um, but the percussionists, honestly, they can't play during that. Uh, if they attack at the front of the note, well, then you get a weird sound. Like they're going to cover up what the band is doing or your orchestra or anything. Um, so this resource was created to outline one a month. So you're in school kind of for 10 months. Um, one being the first month and uh, for us is normally August. And then 10 being the last month, normally like the first week of June. And there's different tempos and they all come with what are what I wrote as practice tracks. And so you can say, hey, percussion class, go into the music library, play Daily Drill 3, practice track 7. So it's labeled 3.7. They go in there, they press play, and now they have an audio guidance track guiding them through a page of sequence of a, a, a page of exercises. It has the metronome built in. It tells them exactly which one's coming next. And it repeats each one at like one tempo and then 10 beats faster, 10 beats faster, 10 beats faster. And then it moves on to the next one. So it's it's guided with my voice. And I created like the first one is just drum set. And then it adds a bass line. And then it adds a marimba line. And then it adds a vibraphone line. So yes, they're warming up. They're doing basic warm-ups that percussionists need. But they're listening to music. They're listening to music be built. And they're playing in time with something. They're on task. While in the band hall, you can work long tones. You can work articulations. You can work the scale patterns. You can work the intricate parts of band music that you don't need percussionists for. Um, a weird thing that I learned to do was I put a Google Meet 
I, in that room so I could monitor them doing it on their own. And so I got to the point where in my sub non varsity, so you're talking the, the best eight and then the best eight and then the next eight, like those sub non varsity, those, those, um, the not the best kids, I could say, Hey guys, go do daily drills for number five today. And they would go up, they would set up, uh, I'm not going to talk about the P1000 today, but they set up their practice table and then they're busy for 15 to 18 minutes while I can focus on my task at hand. I think we've all made the the mistake of asking our percussionists, hey, just go out and practice. (laughs) And if it's not specific, oh, they'll practice throwing things at each other, doing cartwheels, they'll practice. Yeah. And so your guidance Mm -hmm. in that, you've real specific and being able to have it all laid out is brilliant love where this conversation is going uh, so much. But before we get to our final piece here, I just want to invite our listeners to take a minute and think about how you can put some of these practices we've been talking about on all of our Band Director Bootcamp podcasts into practice in your own life. Welcome Band Director Bootcamp listeners. If you're feeling a bit burnt out and are ready for support and accountability partners in your wellness and productivity, we have an amazing opportunity for you. Join our 90-day virtual boot camp, a community initiative designed for busy band directors like you who love their job but seek a more sustainable approach. We'll meet weekly, discuss your wellness goals, and develop strategies to help you achieve them. We'll tackle productivity hacks and fine-tune systems for the upcoming school year. With 35 years of experience, I've got some tricks and tips up my sleeve that I can't wait to share. So, as we move into a new season of our lives, if you want to feel empowered and supported by like-minded individuals, this is your chance. Reach out to me at banddirectorbootcamp.com or click on the link in our show notes to schedule a 15-minute call. Let's ensure this is the right fit for you, get you signed up, and embark on this wellness journey together. Because together, we rise. All right. We are back with Alejandro Gonzalez um, here. And I like to ask some, um, as my last question here, kind of the passing of the baton. Um, You've been teaching now for 13 years. So thinking about that, clearly you love it or you wouldn't be doing it still, right? A lot of people just don't. They they can't. And so you've figured some things out. Um, And before we get to the pass of the baton, maybe this is even a better question. What do you think if you hadn't if you had seen the need or maybe even hadn't recognized the need for these things and hadn't created the resources and been trying to piecemeal with just what you could get your hands on, how do you think your program would be different? Oh, well, I've, I kind of, I've always pieced things together. Like I've used seven different method books to teach beginners and each of them have something to offer. Um, I, I think one of the best things that, that maybe I any advice I could offer is that your best curriculum is one that you create yourself. Um, it's one that you design and you take what you like, take what you like, take what you like, take what you like, and build a curriculum that works for you and for your kids. I mean, you're everybody's kids are going to be different. You know, you go one town over, even in the same town, you can go one school over and this method work won't work with this teacher and these kids. Or between second and third period, which you right in your yes. own same school. But that's the art of teaching, mm-hmm. is knowing, knowing what to look for, knowing what things to consider. Can your students take their instruments home and practice on a regular basis or not? And yeah. so that determines, you know, what kinds of resources you, you should be using and how fast you can move. And I, there's so many things you have to know. And, and mm-hmm. you're right. And what a powerful statement, you know, the curriculum we create. And I think we all end up doing that as band directors. But what you've done is a step beyond that. You then said, hey, I'm going to take, you know, ideas from all of this and put it into what works here. And you've you've created something now that you can replicate other people can use and clearly the results are great i've seen some of your videos and if you guys um tell us your website here we're also going to put it in there but let's say it right now um it's www.aagmusic.com so it's like aag music with a z yeah so you guys need to check that out he's got some great videos on there the way he sets up his percussionists on a table okay we've got just a minute tell us a little bit about 
your table thing. That's pretty cool looking. All right. So this is another cool thing. Um, I actually have a patent for an invention. I, um, I invented a thing and I call it the P1000 practice table. It, it was created as a community table. I love drum circles. I'm about to start a community drum circle up here in Round Rock. Um, and it's 10 practice pads built around a four foot table. They're connected by magnets and they have magnetic inserts. And so your five foot kid can be sta- standing right next to your six foot kid. And with like three magnetic inserts be playing on the same table. There's a built in music stand in the middle. So you only need two sets of music. You don't have to buy like six sets of music and it completely collapses down by folding in two wings. And so to set it up takes about 30 seconds to tear it down, takes about 30 seconds and only one kid needs to stay back. So like our kids all set up and they're like, they kind of get their sticks and they really, they like scurry to the music library. And then they just like are already playing by the time I get in there, like class hasn't even started yet. And then we do our 15 minutes, we work our daily drills. And then one kid stays behind, collapses it down. The other five are already in class or five, seven kids. And then like it, it rolls away into a corner. It's out of the way. It, it has built in storage. It's, it's such a cool invention um i do have a video on my website about it if they want to see it's probably about a 15 minute explanation of everything it can do though yeah it's pretty pretty impressive and it looks i I bet kids would really like it it looks clearly gets down to business they can get there Mm -hmm. they don't have to look around for everything and then that circle thing also lets them have people around them where their peripheral vision is kind of picking up there's a lot of millions of good reasons so wow alejandro gonzalez i want to thank you for coming here today and sharing with us and for all of you band directors out there who are listening and who make a difference in kids' lives through the magic of music education every single day the work you do matters and so do you join us next time on band director Bootcamp for another episode of productivity and wellness tips to make your life a little easier